cannot. Okay. What's going on guys, it's Astros here, and welcome back to episode 2 of the League of Legends Anonymous podcast, LCS edition. Uh, I'm back with Danger, how you doing bud? I'm doing great, happy to be here. I love the two-man show. It goes again, the old man and the young kid. Yeah, we might we might have taken a break as a duo in ranked, but we still got it, this. It was the right move. This is a lot, this is this is better suited to our, uh, our teamwork. <laughs> So let's just let's get right into it. Oh, with the best game of the week, CLG versus 100 Thieves. Oh, I'm just kidding. This is the worst game of the week, but it's still the first game of the week. <laughs> I didn't even take notes on it because I didn't I, I didn't like the game. <laughs> Here's the notes. Um, 100 Thieves decided to start their um, entire uh, lineup from Academy. Uh, save, I guess, Saligo because he's been playing and Bang. And uh, Fragus had a difficult journey in the jungle, we'll say. Um, it was a it was a pretty rough go for 100 Thieves. Uh, we we kind of thought CLG might lose this game because we thought CLG tries to lose every game that they seem like they should win. But 100 Thieves said, "Don't worry, we got you. We're gonna make sure you get that win, CLG." And they did. Um, it was not pretty. Fragus got destroyed in the jungle by Wiggly. Um, Stixay popped off on Callista to the tune of 5 0 and 7 and out farmed Zaya Rakan Pop. So I think that tells you everything you need to know. I think the only shining moment was Fake God, who is the top laner, right? Yep. Uh, he played well on Akali. It's kind of his comfort pick. Uh, it's something he plays a lot of. He played fine. He didn't really carry, but I mean, right? When... He just he he couldn't carry the all of his teammates, and that's what he would have needed to do. But I do agree. I think his Akali looked pretty good. Um, Darshan played Poppy into him, so he wasn't trying to just win lane. He was just trying to survive, and he did. I mean, he didn't he didn't take any solo deaths or anything like that. He just farmed his best, and then he was very good with his uh his dash preventer when Fragus would try and, uh, or, or um, when stunt, either one of them, when they would try and engage, he just shut them down real quick. So I, think, kinda sad. I think one of the biggest things is Power of Evil on the Syndra just completely demolished Galio. Oh yeah. And it wasn't even close. It was so sad. So Legal kept having it back, like with nothing. He bought like a potion and then it would come back. Yeah, it was, it was really bad. Uh, just... They got to make some big changes next split, but I don't want to yeah, talk about I don't, that anymore. I don't think these academy guys are, are, are going to... Maybe they'll maybe they'll get a lot better over the, the few weeks break, but I, I don't think so. Yeah. Game 2 was Echo Foss versus TL, right? Uh, no, Game 2 was C9 versus Fly, I believe. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was Echo okay, versus we can, TL. We can go in any order we want. We could do we could do Echo and Liquid next. Okay. Um. So Echo Fox versus Team Liquid. Uh, I think this was one of the worst games I've ever seen X Smithy play. Yeah, it was really surprising because I love X Smithy in the jungle. I think that he's he's a very smart jungler. He knows how to pressure. I mean, he got pressure early, right? Yeah, against uh, Rush's Jarvan, like like really early, right right at the start. He was taking camps away. He was bullying him out of his jungle. And then inexplicably, he went in there by himself when he could see he, he was on Rek'Sai and he could see um, the bubbles, right, for where people mm -hmm. are located. And he walked right into three members, including uh, – was it, that was this game, right? Yeah, where yeah. He went He went in and it was like Rush, Apollo, and Hakua all just sitting there waiting for him. Killed him. And then after that – he just, for some reason, couldn't get his footing again. It really put Rush into a a much better spot because he got, um, he got his jungle then, which X Smithy was stealing, and then he went into X Smithy's jungle, and all of a sudden he was he was right back in it. Yeah, they were. So I think he played Jarvan four games in a row, and he won yeah. every game since he's been back. It's looking like a really really strong pick for him. He's looking like a complete like 
if I were to take Echo Fox's like first half of the split and Echo Fox now, I'd say that they're just there's no way they're playing with the same jungler. Yeah, he's... it's it's not even close. It's crazy. I mean, he he's he switched up his picks, right? He was going with his solo carry picks at the start of the season, wasn't he? A lot of the the Lee Sin. I, I don't even know. I don't even know if it's the picks. I think because he did an interview after day two. I think he's like when he was off, he had to like completely he reset his mental, uh, and he just really like reeled himself back in from making those like hyper aggressive plays that he doesn't have to make. Like, he stopped making those 30% success rate plays or those 25% success rate plays. And he's he might be falling behind a little bit early, but he's not falling behind to the point where he's completely useless in the game. Right, he's not tilting from that early uh, game X Smithy um, invade. He farmed what he could, he, he, he helped where he could, and he didn't lose them the game, right? That's, that's what he avoided doing early. And I, I agree, I think Rush is playing excellent right now. You wouldn't even you wouldn't even recognize him from what he was doing earlier, and he did take what what two weeks off was it? I think it was something like that. I think it was two weeks. Yeah, I think they brought and in Panda, it, uh, or it was it a week obviously and a half. worked very well because he is completely different. And it's a good time because Echo Fox was in the clump for playoffs, so this keeps him on. Yeah, Wait. and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Solo because Solo looked so good on Aatrox. Solo was, is just looking really like all of Echo Fox has just surprised me with the last like two to three weeks of their play. Yeah, I I agree. I, I Solo I guess always surprises me because I just thought of him last season and I didn't like his play and now that I see him this season where he's getting a little bit more um, support, he's playing great and he's actually able to carry games. He was five zero and four in this with a ton of CS and. He he had a couple of good flanks, if I recall correctly, where he came in and just slaughtered. And he's playing really well. Echo Fox is looking really scary. They're yeah. they're on a roll, and if TL yeah. can't stop him, very few people will be able to. Yeah, but I'd say overall it was a really it was a really good game. After a rough early game, they they came back from that and they just took control of the map, and and they did. It took them a little while to close it out, but I'd, I'd say it was a pretty controlled, which you usually don't think of when you think of Echo Fox, but a pretty controlled, methodical, you know, destruction of, of Liquid, which is still the number one team in NA. Which I think, I'm going to say it, I think they're in a pretty bad slump. Yeah. And now is definitely not the time to be slumping. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially if you looked at, besides impact on the Urgot, if you looked at their draft, you would have been really happy with it. Jensen on Cassiopeia, Double Lift on Jinx, Core JJ on Tom Kench, and X Smithy on Rek'Sai. Now, the Urgot pick I found confusing because I guess it's just the comfort pick for impact, but he on this patch, this isn't the most recent patch. This is. 9.5. Um, yeah, so this was right after Urgot got nerfed into the ground. And. I think it showed. It, he just wasn't able to lane as effectively. And it, they said they picked him because of his ult still could be a game changer in a fight, but mm -hmm. I, I think you could have gone with a lot of other options in the top lane that would have had a better impact. Because that's a good team comp normally. Like for Liquid, you're mm -hmm. thinking that that's going to be pretty devastating. X Smithy can do his thing early, Jensen can scale up, Double Lift can scale up, and you have Core JJ to protect him. Like I would, I would love that comp normally. Yeah, and so this is the second game that uh, Apollo's on Kog'Maw in this game, and they do the the Kog'Maw Lulu. Me. But they did Kog'Maw with Hail of Blades, right? Yeah, Isn't that but, this game? yeah, but the reason you do it is because you can E, and then you know, can press W. Early, yeah, it's the early trade where you can get a ton of damage and, may and maybe it worked out because he actually did very well in lane and you wouldn't have thought that that would have that he would have done as well in lane but he did very well in lane but um i just kept thinking in every team fight i was like if he went lethal temple he would have shredded everyone by now and that's the thing <laughs> when you have um phoenix is on lissandra in this game and i think lissandra is honestly one of like is the best mid lane pick right now hands down it's so good. It's not even close. In every region, Lissandra is number one. It's good in lane. It's good in team fightings. You don't get insta blown up as long as you take uh, 
it's even good for splitting because you're so Aftershock. safe with your E. You're you know? safe. Like you can... You're taking demolish. Like your yeah. passive is not extremely dumb in team fights. Apollo doesn't have to go lethal tempo. All Apollo has to do this game is make it out of the early game, and I just like their team comp better. Yeah, I, I just, agree. They played it very well. I, the whole time I was just like, why Halo Blades? You could be shredding him. But, you know, like like you said, they, they didn't need it, and, and, and it proved they didn't need it. So yeah, if you don't make it to that... They're smarter than me, so... Yeah, if you don't make it to that late game, whether you have lethal tempo or not, it doesn't matter, right? Yep, that's fair. So which one do you want to do next? TSM versus Clutch? Sure, we'll do TSM Clutch next. Uh, so the only fun thing about this game is <laughs> this is when Piglet went back to mid lane and they brought in Cody's son to play AD Carry. Yep, and uh, they had they picked Vayne early along with Zaya, and you thought it was going to be Piglet on Vayne. You were wrong. It was Hooney on Vayne. And he absolutely controlled the waves for like the first like six waves and then proceeded to do nothing the rest of the game it was one of the saddest veins i've ever seen let's see so this is hooney playing some an ad carry in the top lane something he did with the lucian top yep um this Into is akali with broken blade broken blades akali one broken blade didn't over aggress at all he played very reserved yeah, he um, sat under the turret when he was farming, and literally it was, I think, 12 CS to 0 at the start of the game, and at one point, Hooney was up, I want to say, like, 30, mm -hmm. and still Broken Blade hung in there, didn't do anything about it until he knew he had kill pressure, and he would kill him then. And here's and one of the, the reasons, I think, that Hooney wasn't able to aggress the lane as much as he wanted to. So he goes Halo Blade's vein. And the reason of Halo Blaze Vein is you're trying to proc your Silver Bolts as fast as possible. Right. So it's auto Q, auto E, and you proc your Silver Bolts, whether the stun lands or not, because E procs. Um, but with Akali's Shroud, she instantly goes invisible and delays you from getting to proc your Silver Bolts. Granted, your combo is on a shorter cooldown than her Shroud, but it allows her to aggress in the lane and compete in that wave and then if you try and trade on to him he shrouds you draw minion aggro and then the wave will get pushed back into him because your minions are auto attacking his minions while his minions are auto attacking Hooney. so the yep. wave naturally pushes in back into broken blade and he can farm safely under his turn again and when you have a vein top that doesn't do anything then you're gonna struggle for the rest of the game, and that's that's what happened. It, it was it was a low kill game. There wasn't a whole lot going on. Just, yeah. It was just clutch eventually rolling over and dying. Just this was also no barons. Were taken no barons yeah, but TSM took ten towers still. Yeah. Um. So they just methodically walked them down, basically. I mean, I like the bottom sixty percent of clutch's draft which is Lissandra, Zaya, Rakan, and I hate the top two. I don't think Elise is a strong enough jungler, especially... Elise is brutal in NA. I think she's got zero wins right now. I honestly think that she does. I think she just... Pros don't know how to play her, because there was a play in bottom lane at the at the one bush and jungle by, like, your Gromp, uh, yep. where they dived onto Smoothie or Zven. And they layer Lissandra ulti instantly into Lyra's cocoon. Right, so and the cocoon did nothing. CC doesn't stack. Slows right. don't stack in League of Legends. So you're wasting like such an impactful ability with Elise's cocoon, which is why she's so good early. And she has like execute damage and you lose out. And I think I think they got punished for it. I think Smoothie got out or lived long enough for Zven to trade it or something like that. Yeah, I just, I, I don't I don't like the Elise pick at all in NA right now. It's just, people, I mean, in theory it's good, right? You have a nice stun, you can tower dive easily because you can juggle aggro. It can work well, but I, I'm almost positive Elise is at a 0% win rate in NA. And it's because it's not it's not played well. It's, it's just, it's just the, the short of it. I just think there's better early game champions. I think you have J4, you have Rek'Sai. Um, 
even Olaf, I think, is a better pick than Elise right now. I just... I agree. AP junglers aren't in the meta for a reason. Yeah. So, it, it, it was a pretty... It was a pretty slow game. It wasn't all that engaging. And, like I said, TSM just walked it down. They were just much better than Clutch in every phase. I think Piglet needs to learn or figure out what role he wants to play. I think he's trying to, you know... I, I guess Perks is trying to prove that Piglet is just bad. <laughs> and he might just do that. Yeah. So, last... Nope, we have C9, oh, we, yeah, Fly, C9. and then Optic DPS. Yeah, we'll do C9 fly because i thought this was a pretty decent game um yeah it was for a bit so i think the big turning point for this game was the mid lane matchup mid lane morgana is played by niski and this was a pick from worlds yep two seasons ago yeah a while ago um where into, it was like into leblanc right specifically into faker's leblanc specifically yeah. Faker was undefeated on LeBlanc in pro play, I think is what it was, until they pulled out Morgana. And Morgana's rework didn't really change her much. No, it just uh, gave her a, bit, a small buff. Yeah, so it makes it even better. And they do pull it out, and it does extremely well. Yep, because it, it just neutralized Bo Belter. And it stops Bo Belter being able to... Uh, Spiral, uh, Niski also with W is able to push waves if Belter roams really, really fast. And on multiple occasions, I remember JJ alting and flying in, and Niski just queuing him and laughing as he just like looks at looks at him standing there right before he's about to hit three people with his alt. Yeah, I so this is weekend. Wild Turtle came in with a new bowl cut and. <laughs> I think this game, it definitely affected his play. I didn't think he or JJ had a very good game at all. No, JJ, JJ had probably had, I mean, it could have been a better game had I not thought Niski played so well, but they, he was literally stopping him every single engage that he was going for. It was, it, it was really impressive. And then you have the Morgana shield and Zazel on Tom Catch. So yeah. you can protect Sneaky on Jinx so easily it was, it was just, you could just spit her out behind him and she would keep rocketing everyone. And, um, Licorice played really well in the top on Ornn as well. All Licorice had to do was not die, and all Viper had to do was not die, and they both mm -hmm. scale similarly into the late game. Uh, Ornn increases damage for his team, Viper increases damage for his team with his ultimate. Uh, I think another really big turning factor is Santorn did not play well this game, like, like at all. No, it was his worst game of the split, I would say, easily. Which I was surprised while watching him. Comes to fruition when he doesn't play the second game on Sunday because he was sick. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think I I'm gonna hope that was part of it. Yeah. Uh, cause he had a pretty good two games last week. Uh, cause I think Santorn is second or third best jungler in NA. And really helps FlyQuest create a lot of pressure around the map yeah i'd agree and and I, we've been we praised him last week i think i think Versus he had really the good team games last game. week yeah yeah because and then this week just... it was definitely definitely a fall off from where he was at last week so hopefully he's he it was a pretty better. good early game there was a lot of back and forth but then eventually c9 just took control yeah and and, and took him down all right now we're at the last game of saturday now, uh, optic, versus, optic GGS. versus ggs uh bad game uh just not very interesting game i don't no. want to say bad game yeah uh, it, 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 it's it, just it, uneventful there's yeah, nothing so, so exciting this was a protect the kogma group right uh so they yes. had arrow on cog and then you had big on tom, tom. you had crown on zelayan right and then yeah. you had um and Dokla, then you had some engage. On I think Camille that, and Jarvan. So Dokla on didn't play bad on Camille. I didn't understand the pick of Camille after you go to protect the Kogma comp, right? So if if that's your win condition, I don't get the Camille. I would rather have a beefy tank that can help peel for him. I'd rather have would a you? beefy tank. I'd rather have um 
Like, there's a lot of different top picks I'd rather have. And right, and, and like I said, I'm not saying Doku played bad on Camille. He had, he, he, had he, had, he was game. the only guy with kills on. Right, he was offense. literally the only one with kills. But that also is a problem because the only one with kills should be Kogma. And when mm. you when you draft like this, like I get Medios because that means you can lock people down with his alt, right? Mm -hmm. And then Kogma can and just free fire. You can still go the bomby sender with uh, Knight's Vow. Yep. And so you have a tank in top lane. Someone like I don't know, um, I mean Maokai is not big right now, but I would love a Maokai in this combo just because I mean, he's a beefy tank that could help heal for arrow. Um, and then I like his ult, so I would love like Maokai. Uh, you can go with an engaged tank for Melfight, like especially because it was into an Aatrox and a Kindred and a on hit Varus, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, a nice armor tank would be good, but um, but that didn't happen and. They didn't do anything, and Golden Guardians just took them. Is essentially what it was. Not a lot of kills. Yeah, this was a um, clean game from GGS, which is good because they're fighting. They were fighting with Black Quest for who gets fourth or fifth. Um, so it was just like a clean game. I would have oh, even yeah, I preferred. I forgot to say. So, um, Kindred, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Who was it? Uh, Contracts was on Kindred. He got stupid luck. So he's killing his first scuttle crab. Boom. And he gets it turns the mark. Into his mark. Yep. Then he's killing the third scuttle crab. Boom. It pops up as yep. the mark as he's killing it. Then he gets a kill on someone. And then they're just invading the jungle and it pops up as a mark. And I all think of a sudden, it was he has on a ground. Yeah. At like nine minutes or 10 minutes, something stupid. So it was crazy luck. And then he just popped off from there. All their lanes won anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing I did like that Optic did is they engaged when they were losing. Instead of just like letting them walk down and mm -hmm. take all of their inhibitors, they actually went for fights. And I don't understand why teams don't do this more often. Because you see a game and you like, okay, in nine minutes this game's over. Because they're just walking down, they're just defending, and they're not trying anything. And I did like the optic turned around and decided to fight. Now, of course, they were behind and they lost, but it was worth the shot. So yeah. I did like uh, that. I think it was Doublelift who said it, um, that... Teams in NA, when they are starting to fall behind, you have to start taking uh, more risks in order to get back in the game. Especially mm -hmm. if it's not like you have the better late game comp. Because I honestly, I don't know if they do. Like you have the Protect the Cogma comp, but you have that off put top laner that doesn't really fit it. So yep. even if they go late when you're fighting a Kindred, Lissandra, Varus, Braum. I don't know if Kog'Maw carries that game. I don't think that he does, but I do like that they at least fought it out. Because in many of these other games that we've yeah. been talking about, the team's just folded at the end. It's just like, oh, let's all sit under our turret and it, no engage, right? It's the team that's winning is like, fuck it, we'll just engage at the end of the game and kill you. That, mm -hmm. you know, like just for fun. Yeah. So I, I did like that Optic did that. It didn't work for him, but it's, it's worth a shot. People give it a shot. Yeah. Uh,. So that was That's the, the end of day one. Yeah, on to day two. I really enjoyed watching day two. Was my favorite. <laughs> uh, I agree. It was. It was. It was a pretty. Especially good this first game. This first game was really fun to watch. <laughs> so this is uh, the start of uh, the fight for fourth or fifth place. Yep. Um, if Golden Guardians win, it forces tiebreaker at the end of the day for fourth and fifth, and. Golden Guardian win. Uh, a pick that we haven't seen in NA a lot is Haunter pulls out Cho'Gath. If you remember, he liked Cho'Gath quite a bit when, when, when he was big last season, right? Haunter yeah. played him quite a bit, I believe. Haunter is a good tank player. He's a lot like Impact. Yep. Uh, and gets, a, gets super fed. Um, and the only person who really got fed on FlyQuest was Sam Torn. He ends up with 5 out of 8 of the kills. Which isn't bad if it's early game. But they didn't. They were later. Yeah. Uh, and then you have Ole gets Tom Kench again. I say it every week, obviously. Pros aren't listening to the podcast. Just ban Tom Kench from Ole. Ban Tom Kench and pick Braum. And, like, Ole's champion pool becomes Alistar Thresh. Yep. And he doesn't oh, don't play forget as his bard, well. man. 
Bard gets so punished by I know, I'm so just many kidding, champions. <laughs> I do remember playing Bard a couple of times. Um, <laughs> no, it's 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 absolutely ridiculous that they keep leaving up Tom Kench for him. It's it's it's, it's such a strong pick in the meta right now too. Uh, it needs to stop. It it has to stop. You you can't you can't give him Tom Kench every fucking time. Definitely plays. But he plays good Tom Kench, yeah, and, it, and it worked out well. Uh, Definitely plays Varus, something that he's comfortable on. Uh, Froggen pulls out another Froggen pick with the Velka, something I think only Crown has played the split. Yep. Uh, and the true damage on Velka is gonna be crazy though when he pops that all. And it makes it so you can like really disincentivize uh, like POB engaging or Viper on the Aatrox engaging because you have so much like linear damage and. Mm -hmm. Both of those champions are linear. Right, and they had a lot of mid-range champions, right? Lissandra, Viper, and... Or Lissandra, Aatrox, Aatrox Lucian. and Lucian, right? Yeah. Everyone's a mid-range champion. So you throw that alt down out, out of their range, and all they can do is dash to the sides or try and retreat. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. And it was, it was very well constructed. I also thought this was a really bad game from JJ. He got... Insta comboed by Froggen so many times to where he's at thirty percent, twenty percent HP, and they can't fight, and they have to give up whatever objective they're fighting for, or instant if they force it, they have to play with JJ at risk of getting insta bursted. Yep. Um, Golden I also Guardian. Don't love the Lucian pick into Varus because Varus can trade with Lucian early. Mm -hmm. Due to his E range, and he and he went he went lethal, lethal temple. temple. Yep. Um, and so Lucian can't really bully him out, and then Varus has longer range than him, so it mm -hmm. it, it it really doesn't. I, I don't think it works very well. I now, think I it can't was, remember who picked first, but I think it was picked because they got Brom, and Lucian Brom is a really high kill pressure lane. But right. when you pick it, and Tom Kench gets picked, I don't remember if they picked it into the Tom Kench or not. You can't put your brown stacks on the AD carry or Tom Kench just, just eats them. Yep. And you saw that a couple times in lane where it definitely gets three stacks, a lay eats them and runs away. And then by the yep. time he spits them out, the stacks are gone. And if you focus Ole, you're gonna it's gonna be longer to burst him down and definitely is gonna proc his uh lethal tempo and the trade might not go your way either. But you gotta ban Ole. You gotta ban his Tom Kench. You just yeah. gotta do it. Uh, so I think this Nocturne Lissandra combo is actually just completely disgusting. Yeah, cause he would, cause he normally it, it does work very well, cause you hit that Nocturne alt, and then Lissandra comes in from a weird angle with her E, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden she's on top of you, Wing, and then Ring and Qing, and it's it's a ton of damage. Um, and if Nocturne gets the pick. He just instantly gets to proc the Lissandra passive. Yep. Which it might have not worked this game, but I think the combo gets picked a lot. I think it's a good yeah, it's it's a good combo. It's it's very gross. But in this particular game it didn't work out. But I mean it was a close game throughout. I mean we're we're talking like they got destroyed. I mean they did end up losing, but you know, like it was only five towers to six towers. Um, FlyQuest actually got more dragons, mm -hmm. um, but Golden they ended up with an elder a couple too. barons. Yeah. Oh, I um, remember this game. Probelp was this the game? Probelp gets caught on when so they get elder. Uh, yep, he starts he cutting just, through right by chickens. Yep, for no reason. Oh my That's god! That's exactly I remember what that cost game. them this game. Because yeah. then all of a sudden they they walked it down. They could get a free baron then, right at that point. So. Well, they, they got the Baron. Uh, they traded it for Elder. Mm -hmm. This was when Golden Guardians had 10 pink wards in their inventory. Every player yeah, on GGS that. had two <laughs> pink wards. They went, they take Baron. You can't fight it because you have no vision and you can't get any because all pink wards. So they traded for Elder. Everyone backs except for, except for Pope, and Pope gets <laughs> caught at chickens for no reason. Yep, I, and then I remember they just that now. walk it down. They get another pick at the end hit, and then they just end. Yep, oh. that was all on that pick too, because they, they could have they could have definitely stalled that game out. The, mm -hmm. the gold was not crazy difference, maybe like two k at that point. 
Yeah. Uh, I think that's another game. It, it's really hard to pick a game of the week between Echo Fox MTL and GGS versus FlyQuest. Uh, both games, I think, were really good on Sunday. We'll get to the second one at the end. But there were a lot of good games this week, and it's really there hard were. to pick one. You know what wasn't a good game? 100 Thieves versus Optic. Uh, you... <laughs> I would like to cover it right now just to say yeah. don't watch um, this game. Unless you're a big Twitch fan, in which case Twitch gets picked and pops off at 5.08. Um, but to be fair, that's against... I mean, I, I feel bad for Frogus, but... Uh, Meteos just... showed him what <laughs> LCS jungling is. It, it like, is not fun. Frogus went 0-5 in both games. Like, it's just... Well, it's this game, he picks sad. Nunu, which has only been picked one time, I want to say, in LCS. Yep. And didn't win. And he no. gets obliterated. He kept wheeling a snowball into people and then just dying. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you might so not want to go into this lane where you're outnumbered 3-2, to two, and then your teammate rightfully runs, and you're just, just sitting there. It just... It was it was pretty sad. Fake Dokla, God, Dokla did a good job on Silas. Yeah, Fake God can't fight Dokla because Dokla has uh, is playing tank Silas. Jax doesn't bully him out early enough. Uh, Crown pops off on Aurelio, which is Medios had a really good team comp to work his top side because yeah. he's got a melee top and a melee mid and just. Completely walks all over everything in the top side. Fang's the only one who really played decent. He didn't play bad. He didn't play great. He, yeah, played, he played bad. I think he it's played what a I expect from him, especially for what was going on around him. Yeah. To be five, three, and three when the rest of your team is a combined three and uh, seventeen. It's, yeah. That's a pretty good game, and he still outs the S arrow. So. He at least had that going for him. But this, this, that's all there is to say about this game. That's that's it. That's 100 versus Optic. So 100 Thieves, tough, tough season. Tough Echo start. Fox versus CLG. This was another good game. Yeah. Uh, and I'd say, it's to me, it's the game of the week just because of what was riding on it. Because whoever won this went to playoffs. Whoever didn't was out. And Echo Fox won, which I'm really happy about. I think Echo Fox is a far better team than CLG. For one, uh, I like Echo Fox. For two, they've been playing better. And for three, fuck CLG. So with that as my combo, I couldn't have been happier when this game was rolling. It was excellent. So this game really surprised me. So Rush has Wiggly in his jungle the whole game. Oh, yeah. And I think it's this thing where I think CLG should just want Wiggly to fall behind early because every time I see him with, like, a 30 CS lead, they lose the game. He just does nothing with his leads. Um, it's because the duo is Wiggly-Darshan, right? Wiggly loves ganking Darshan. And Darshan went back and picked his on-hit Nico again. And if you recall from last week, it it made Astros throw up watching it. And it didn't do any better this week. He and once solo... again was against the Vlad. Mm -hmm. like, and he bullies him at the start of the game. And he's got him he under his turret. He didn't even bully him. Solo played the lane better than Broken Blade did, and they, I think, the, like the biggest CS discrepancy was like fifteen CS. Yeah, maybe it wasn't 10. even that much. And it was, he it didn't was, even have like the turret plates. It was awful. It was awful to watch his Nico. It's a terrible pick. It doesn't help them at all. And then Weekly camps that lane, right? And mm -hmm. then he gets, and they got nothing out of it. And then that's really bad for the rest of your lanes. If they, if they had camped, you know, like. Um, I don't know, the Cassadin? That probably would have been a good idea, because Phoenix is on Cassadin, and he was left to farm a decent a decent event. I mean, it's not like PoE, P Power of Evil, had a bad game. It's no. just that um, you need to keep Cassadin all the way down. You want him to get nothing. And, and Wiggly was not taking his advantage at all. Phoenix but had a really, really Nico. good late game. Uh, yep. Another thing, Apollo gets Jinx. Apollo is a really good AD carry. I'd argue that he's top four in NA, honestly. He's really, he's really flying up in, in the last three weeks. Like, if, if you had said it the first five weeks, I would have said he was a bottom three, right? 
but in the last three weeks, he's performing as a top four for sure. Yeah, he's just like he doesn't he doesn't necessarily hard win lane, but he doesn't hard lose lane. Right. He, and then he's he good plays at the fights. champions. He's good at. He's one of. I think he might be one of the best team fighting anti carries in LCS. Haku gets his signature Morgana, uh, which he played well. Uh, a big change that I didn't know is it used to be that if Zoe Sleepy Trouble levels you, you have to Black Shield before it hits you and before yeah, you get drowsy. It. If you remember, I hated it. It, it just made no sense, right? And it's a magic effect, and you would throw the Black Shield on him, and it would still put you to sleep. It made me... And Me what and many people angry. what they did with the rework is, as long as you black shield before the drowsy follows through and they sleep, they don't yeah. sleep. And I don't know if Poe knew that. <laughs> he found out. <laughs> I know. I, I think every it's every single time he ruined his his combo by just throwing the black shield on and they walk away. I, I, I think it was Freak who was like, I don't know if that's how that's supposed to happen. Maybe he did get it on just in time. He's like, oh, okay, that is how it works. Um, Solo plays a really good game on Vlad. Like, just Echo Fox is looking really good. So Rush is the only person on his team who goes deathless. And he gives up. His losing parts are all... He doesn't over-aggress in his jungle on the Sizwani. And plays an amazing game. He's got the highest kill participation, highest KDA. I don't know who is going to stop Rush. He's playing so well, and he's playing picks that you're not used to seeing him play. I don't know if I've ever seen Rush on Sedge One. Can you recall a time? If I don't like, you don't know Rush for his Sedge One. You know Rush for his his Lee Sin, his yep. his carry junglers. And he's playing. I think. I think that's the difference. Is that Echo Fox is playing a great team style right mm -hmm. now. Everyone's game is complementing everyone else, and it, they're just playing outstanding. Th to me, this is also like the ultimate um, battle between late game and early game, right? Mm -hmm. You have Apollo on Jinx, you have Phoenix on Cassidy, and you have Solo on Vlad. Those are three late team or late and game. And you have Sejuani monsters right and then you have darshan on nico we talk about his terrible you have wiggly on rexai um and then you have 6a on lucian and power of evil on on, on zoe but i don't um i i consider her still good late game mm -hmm. but the other three that those are early and, and then biofrost on thresh you're looking for those early picks those are early game dominant champions and they just didn't get that um that that lead that you need when mm -hmm. you're playing that much playing that much towards the early game. I also wanted to bring this up, but do you remember the two minute team fight from like minute twenty three to minute twenty five? It's like the longest team fight I've ever seen. It was unreal. You're talking was, about the one where they, was, they uh... engage mid lane, then they chase all the way into the jungle, then then three people survive, go to Dragon, then two other people show up, kill them, but then two, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Cassid and teleports in. Yep, gets and two, and up. then dies, and then Solo yeah. comes back in and cleans up the Zoe. It was <laughs> the longest team fight I have ever seen, and it was fucking insane. Like, the casters didn't get a break, they're just, like, <laughs> screaming for two minutes straight. It was fucking awesome. It was a I fun game it. to watch. Uh, that's where Solo got really fed. Yep. He collected a lot of bounties. <laughs> it was so much fun. That yeah, that that's why this is my game of the week. Because at that point, it's still really close at the like twenty three minute mark. Mm -hmm. Um, and then and then Fox takes over after that, which I was really happy with. All right, you want to go into the the C nine Academy game? Oh yeah. So C nine <laughs> is locked at second seed with their Saturday win. So they decide we're gonna debut three. Of our academy player, or I guess it's only two. I think Keith has played on LCS. Keith has played on LCS. So they, Kumo, who is their academy top laner, and Diamond, who is their academy support, uh, and they bring him out against player. Clutch, uh, which again is playing Piglet mid and Cody Sun AD carry. But I mean, it's it's their full squad. It's also Blabber, Golden Glue, and Keith. So. Even though Blabber, Golden Glue, and Keith have all seen LCS play, it is their entire academy team. 
is rolled out there. Yeah. Um, but and so you're like, oh, Clutch has a chance, right? Yeah. Uh, no. No. no so not at all. It's awful. <laughs> Did you? Do you remember <laughs> the start of this game? It was a solo queue start. It was like the stupidest start I think I could have possibly. It, it looked like. Braun walks in <laughs> past River into their side. Burns Flash <laughs> level one. Then they walk in to the other side where they're all sitting, and then they all start plinking each other again. It was it was so stupid. Uh, a big thing. It looked to... like I was watching a Lola uh, community <laughs> game. <laughs> First Lola community game in the beginning, and then C9 yep. turns out to actually just be Challenger Smurfs, <laughs> and right? and then the Lola players are the podcasters on Clutch. Yep. Yep, and uh, then we got destroyed. Uh, like I just Keith popped the fuck off. So Keith was so good. He got first was blood. Excellent. Him and Diamond get first blood, despite being down Flash. I think they get it like level two or level three. Yeah, and it's um, just because Vulcan just goes in, takes it, the takes the Brom Q to the face and gets stunned, and then he's too. Yeah. fragile and just gets destroyed and it's so sad when you see a Zaya Rakan lane get just like destroyed by like a late game carry like Jinx it's like you know you don't stand a chance then yeah um so I think it was level 4 or level 5 Lyra comes down on the Lee Sin but Lyra doesn't come down through river and straight Lyra walks down river into try and around that wall under their turret and Diamond and Key see this based off of a ward, and they're like, well, we're not going to run towards the Lee Sin. We're going to run towards your bot lane. <laughs> and Vulcan Lee Sin's gets... so far away, <laughs> and he jumps yeah. over the wall and just takes turret shots. Like, it was just such... It was so like, a, a, it was a good play from C9, because I think if they back up, uh, this game goes completely different. Yeah. So... Diamond picks up a kill. Keith picks up two kills. So now Keith is super fed. And Flapper was struggling a little bit. Uh, he got three, uh, three, three quadrated. He didn't even just get three buffed. He lost. So Lyra took his whole blue side. Lyra took mm -hmm. his own blue side and his own red side. Because Flapper takes red buff and level two ganks bottom. After or after Krunks. And that is what gives Keith first blood. Uh, which then, Blabber is now starved for experience, because he's lost both crabs and his whole blue side jungle. Which is, it's rough, but because of his bot lane, it, it allows Blabber to not lose the game. Right. Uh, Thuni pulls out Lucian into Gangplank, which was his counter pick. Uh, so they pick Lucian before they picked their AD carry. I think they picked Lucian first rotation. And I'm looking at it, and the second Kumo locks in Gangplank, because uh, Clutch has final pick, I'm like, Huni's taking that top lane. There's no doubt in my mind. Huni takes a top lane and gets a 30 to 40 CS lead, gets no kills, gets like Kumo two to three nice turret plates. Like, Golden Guru played well. Diamond and Keith played awesome. Kumo doesn't die. Uh, like, just the C9 Academy created C9's biggest gold league at 15 minutes. <laughs> over the whole C9's main roster. C9 was never ahead in gold more than they were at 15 minutes. with, Despite this game, with their Academy roster. Yeah, it was a, it was a stomp. I liked uh, the signs that Licorice and Niski made that uh, benched LCS player looking for a team willing to boot camp. <laughs> uh, that was funny. This was this was a fun game to watch if you're a C9 fan and you like rooting for the under real players. Yeah, it was it, it was cool. They gave him a chance to get on stage. It's it's good for them, and obviously it's nice to pick up a win deciding win uh the last game of the regular season one of the most hyped games uh of the season tsm versus liquid uh asterisk is a happy boy 
TSM fan Astros is? Uh, so, you know, you instantly know it's going to be better if you have a TL don't first pick York. Uh, this was something that I thought was really funny. If you remember, Jensen was on C9 last season, and they were known for playing a Kindred Zillion comp. Yep. And TSM plays it. And it looks really comp. good. It really if did. this game, if this team comp goes late game, they don't lose. Uh, Broken Blade demolishes Impact, because Impact is not playing a tank. Impact cannot play carries. At all. Yep, and he's on Vlad, and... Broken Blade Broken gets his Blade Akali. Fully, um, he played a very clean Akali, too. He had multiple nice plays. Um, I don't think Impact played bad, I just... You need to have a greater, a greater impact. Get it? Um, he when either you're needs. A Vladimir. He either yep. needs to. He needs jungle attention, or you have to be willing to just completely sack it, and you have to be able to turtle until he comes online. And I thought X Smithy's last game was his worst until I saw this game. This game was bad. I still think his last game was worse. Yeah. I think after his last, I think his game Saturday, he was like zero and seven. Something like that. Good. He was I, one he and just, six. He, he almost like just disappeared in this game. Yeah, he just had a bad weekend, similar to Santorin. I, maybe that's why TL isn't winning. Because uh, I feel like this week and last week, X Smithy didn't have great games. Yeah. X Smithy had some good plays last week, uh, but all around, they didn't notice. Win. This is the same bot lane duo that we were praising Tom Kench and Barris versus a Lucian Braum, right? Mm -hmm. And then this time, the Lucian and Braum popped off. Uh, yeah, I just, I know everyone was saying Dublift, Core JJ, best bot lane in NA. Um, Zven can't play without Miffy. I know these were big things at the start of the season. Zven and Smoothie look like an insane duo. Yeah, Zven, Zven, in particular, in my opinion, has looked really good as of recently. And I um, think it's because his support is an inting, and it allows Zven to play <laughs> the game he wants to play. Well, the best part is, is Mithy's playing good over for... He's on OG, right? Or uh, yeah, I think so. And and he's he's so good for him, I mean, that he's able to recover, but I agree. In NA, he looked like He shit. was by far I the mean, worst just... player on that lineup. And I think that lineup had more than one issue. player on that lineup. I, I was pretty sure he was worse support in NA. In NA? And that's, uh, that's yeah, a, probably. That's a terrible feeling. And that's something that's like that... like where um, Lemonation is supposed to be. You, know? He's supposed you to mean be you? Support in NA. Yeah, that's right. Lemonation right here. Uh, Beerson plays well. <laughs> Acadian plays well. This was just a really good game from TSM. They get and what two I really barons. like is the draft. Like you said, they, they controlled it. Um, Jensen just didn't have that one big alt that you needed Oriana to. Like I think he played a he played a pretty good laning phase, but he just you need that that hyper alt. And I think the problem was is he was expecting to be able to throw it on X Smithy, but X Smithy was going in and just I mean, dying that's another or thing. not going in is just is what where he's left at. And double lift got he was useless. He's o three yeah. and three at the end of this game. Zvet is four o and six. Or yeah, he just got, like picked off a couple of times, and then he was an on-hit Varus. So once you're an on-hit Varus, if you can't, if you're, if you're just using your Q from long range, then you're not doing all that much. So hopefully, with TL having the extra week off, not having to play the first round of playoffs, they can figure this out. Um, Broken Blade is up 70 CS at the end of the game. Acadian is up 70 CS at the end of the game. Uh, mid lane and bot lane are pretty close to even with. 20 CS disparities in mid. Yeah, Liquid just look. They look. Um, I wouldn't say they look bad. I'd say they look like they were outplayed both games. Because like, because saying they look bad doesn't give enough credit to TSM and Echo Fox for very well played games. I don't think. Um, I think they were made to look bad. I think yeah. this is what happens, and I called it. Um, I think I've talked about it in the Discord. TL came out playing the old style of League of Legends when 
NA didn't know how to play the new style that they're playing in Korea and they're playing in EU. And they can't make the adaptation to play early and play proactive. And they sit, they play the, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to out macro you in the late game. And it's not working. No. Nope. And not the last couple of weeks at least. And I think, as you've seen, TSM is looking on form. Echo Fox looking on form. TSM beats them. Echo Fox beats them. FlyQuest looking good. FlyQuest beat them last week. Yep. And C9 lost to them early in the season, but C9 is looking really good too recently. Mm -hmm. So C9 I lost to they... them the week before, or maybe the day before Fly versus them. But TL going one and four in your last two weeks, going into playoffs as the first seed is not a good look. Especially when every other person in playoffs is looking good. There's not a single team that I look at in playoffs and I'm like, I'd replace that team with someone else. Yeah, like they're going to roll over, right? No, yeah. I, I, because the last team in was Echo Fox as the sixth seed and they're on like a four game, five game winning streak and they've beaten the likes of Liquid, C9, uh, it, it, they've, They've just looked really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're hot. So even though they're the sixth seed, they're a hot team right now. So. Black West is looking good. GGS is looking good. Like Every team in playoffs is looking good. And I really hope this is the point where, unlike last season, where it was, I think, TL 3 0 playoffs both times. Yeah, I don't see that happening this time. Unless they can work something out in this bye week. I don't know. So, uh, the tiebreaker game for 4th and 5th place between GGS and FlyQuest. Do you want to start talking about this a little bit so I can go with my dogs in? Absolutely. Okay. So, we have um, flying, Fly versus GGS. And we, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, we have Maxi coming in um, for Santorin because Santorin was sick. So you have Maxi making his debut in a tiebreaker game. Um, and he goes with Nocturne, which is apparently one of his safer picks. Um, and he does a pretty good job. Uh, he he plays well. It's, it, it's, it's a really good game. It's a lot of back and forth. It ends 18 to 14 kills, 7 to 8 towers. Each team gets a Baron. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of... It, it, it's a very good game. I would suggest watching it. Uh, you have Belter on Aurelia, and then Hanser on Poppy, and this is the game where they follow each other around, right? Are you <laughs> yeah. Back? Yeah. So Poe Belter doesn't want to go up against Poppy. He wants to go up against Rise, Frog and Rise. So he starts off by going mid, but unfortunately Poppy also goes mid, and so throughout the like first like 15 minutes of the game, you have Lissandra randomly showing up mid lane hoping to find Rise, and almost every time Golden Guardians correctly sniffed it out and had their guys going to the right lane. Yeah. So it was it was really funny. It was a back and forth. Um but it, it it's it's a really well played game on the whole. Like I said, I think I think Maxi played a pretty good nocturne. Yes. Uh, he really impressed I me. A, I was really surprised by the bot lane picks for FlyQuest cuz you think of Ezreal and Rakan, and I just don't see that as a normal combination. I think the Rakan is picked more so as a team fighting pick for right. late game to match it with the Pobelter's Irelia and Viper's Lissandra. Um, I think that adds even more to it. Um, it also helps with Nocturne goes in, makes it dark, you go in, you combo, Viper combos on Lissandra. Pobelter hits a big stun, a big ulti. Lissandra passive kills everyone, right? Yep. Wild and Turtle is, gets to play safe on Ezreal. And, and that's what he did. He just played a very safe um, laning phase because they're up mm -hmm. against the Braum Lucian, right? Mm -hmm. But luckily with Ezreal's Q, you can just farm from way away from them. And that's that's what he did. And you just, as JJ, you're basically doing nothing for the first 15 minutes because you can't engage because you you're getting popped if you, get, you engage. Um, and you don't have any range, and he's just queuing from far away. So he literally was just like trying to hit a heal every now and then. But it, it was it was the right play because it allowed them to survive lane without being down CS, without being down 
and they were up gold, I'm pretty sure, because of Hundo. Um, oh, I, th I think so. He ended with a CS League, too. Uh, this game was extremely back and forth, and I don't know... I think part of it was Ho really struggled in the side lanes. He got caught out a lot uh, between the the uh, Jarvan from Contracts, the Haunter from Poppy, Frog and Ult. Uh, he really struggled up until like the 30-ish minute mark, um, which he then turned it on. There was a team fight top lane uh, at right around Tier 2. It was like the 27-ish minute mark. Um, where it's a super, super close fight. Uh, GGS does end up pulling ahead, but FlyQuest has Lissandra, and Lissandra passive is if someone dies, you spawn a little thing and it explodes and does AoE damage. A lot of AoE damage at this point. And GGS come out with two health bars that are literally like 150 HP. And... If they would have gotten a pick early, I think that fight completely changes. But GGS scrapes away, they get Baron off of it, and it stalls it out even harder and makes it harder for Fly to come back. And and then at 32 minutes, they're I think Fly's at mid lane. Or yeah, they're defending mid in him turret, and they win a fight. And kind of, they take Baron off of three, I believe. And yeah, because because wasn't Frog and Bot at that point in time pushing in yeah. the lane? I think so. And so, and that's what we're talking about when we say NA teams need to be proactive. The second he's pushing that bot, so often you see the team just sit under the turret, let the you know like oh we'll wave clear, we'll we'll just ride out Baron. But uh, Fly makes the in my opinion, correct move and say, hey, there's three of them, and we see Rise Bot, and, and I can't remember. I don't think there were all four were there. I think someone else might have been pushing in top lane. And uh, so they just think, go. Yeah. And, and so I think Haunter has to TP in, because I think he was pushing in top lane at the same time. But they just go, and they're able to kill three of them, and so you, they get three Barons off the table, and all of a sudden it's a lot harder to push these multiple lanes. And and it was it was it was a great choice, and it I think that turned the game in their favor at that point because they they could have been walked down, lost two in hits, right, but survived, and then the Baron would fall off. But now you have two in hits gone, and it completely changes the style of play you need to play. I think this game shows why I don't you can't one three one into a Nocturne team comp because either Nocturne is gonna ult one of your solo laners and blow him up, which. He probably he can't do to the poppy, and he probably can't do to frog rise. Yeah. So why go be... for the one when they can just hop on your three? You have massive AOE damage from Lissandra, insane Three crowd CC control from, from for Khan. Yep. Eob layers that because he gets more Q resets on his stun because it hits more people more Q resets on his ult because it hits more people. And this shows GGS splits and isn't five man when FlyQuest takes I wanna say they take a dragon bot lane and they start walking bot lane, jump on them, get the picks early, and it just they can't hold it. They they lose I think they win any five V five. Haunter is extremely tanky and can stop so much from the Rakan and the Irelia. Froggen is massive. Olay is playing Braum. Definitely gets outscaled on Lucian, but I mean, every other champion it they have. It wasn't late enough game for him to be completely outscaled. No, and it's right? still Lucian. He does so much damage. You have a squishy Rakan. You have Ezreal. Um, Nocturne isn't crazy tanky. Right. There was just so many times Viper played a really good game. His scoreline is 1-3 and 14 where it's like, well, how do you have a great game? Pobelter has 10 kills. Pobelter made this game harder, I think, by getting caught in the side lane so much. Right. Viper played fights so well, buying time between his ulti and his, his stasis. He had some really good flanks. JJ played a much better game on the Rakan than he did on uh, Saturday on... Uh, 
whatever he played Saturday. I'm blanking. JJ? Uh, on the Brom. Yeah. Like, the early game was scary, and I really thought the Fly was going to lose this game. Uh, I thought P.O.B. had a pretty shaky weekend. Uh, I don't think he played horrible. I just think he had a couple, like, brain fart moments. Uh, but they do pull out the win. Uh, I don't think it discredits GZS from anything. They're not playing the most standard team comps uh, with Ponser on, like, the tanks like Chogat Poppy. I think I GGS is especially terrifying in a five-game series because Froggen has so many interesting picks that he can make that will help out this team. I agree. I think Hanser is willing to play a lot. Um, I think the, the only scary part is if they can, if Ole gets banned out, what can they do to stop the bleeding? Because Deathly isn't an insane laner. I think he's, he's a middle-of-the-pack laner. And some of these... I think every other team in playoffs, I look at their bot lane and I'm like, yep, those are definitely solid bot laners. You got Sneaky Zazel, Double Earth Core JJ, um, Zven and Smoothie. Uh, Don't forget Apollo. Wild Turtle JJ, Apollo Aqua. Yep. And I definitely clump Deathly and LA at that sixth place bot lane. For sure. I would agree. Especially if you could take out LA's lane picks. Mm -hmm. and I think this top half of the map between Frog and Contracts and Onsa really has to dictate how GGS games go. So that leads us into playoffs then. So who is your pick between TSM and Echo Fox, and how many games do you think it goes? Uh, I think this goes... I can see this going four or five games. I don't think it's a 3-0 stop either way. Um... I think TSM, I'm going to have to vote for them because they're my team. But if any team, if I were to put any team to beat them, it'd be Echo Fox. And I think it's a shame because these are the two hottest teams going in, right? Yeah, these are the this two is teams what I'd want to see. I really final. seem to figure out what they're doing. Um, I am a big Echo Fox fan. Um, I'm a moderate TSM fan. Uh, you know, like, I don't hate them. I don't love them. Uh, I You're think the TSM few. wins this. I, I think TSM wins this. I think it's a it's a 3-1 most likely. But in my heart, I still hope Echo Fox pulls it out. Just, I really like the games they've been playing. They've been playing very well. And I like how hot they are. But TSM is the only other team that's just as hot. If either FlyQuest or Gold Guardians were up against either one of these two teams, I would pick these two teams. Yeah, I think uh, I think the problem is uh, if Echo Fox, if I were to see Echo Fox winning this series, they're really gonna find have him being solo in Russia really gonna have to find a way to trip up Acadian and Broken Blade, because when TSM's look bad, it's when Broken Blade and Acadian are looking bad in the top side two v two. Yeah, and and I think that they can do it because I do think Solo has been playing excellent top. So I agree. And Rush, but I'd... Rush the last few weeks has been undeniable. So it, you know, I I think it might be a three two, but I yeah, I, still I could see this them. going three one three two. Yeah. Uh, I still, but it also depends on Phoenix. Phoenix has weird picks, and he can really cause some um cause some interesting matchups with some of his. Yeah, but I picks. think I think bjergsen has been around so long that you know he's not playing the super flashy stuff anymore. You know the Zeds and stuff that he was playing when he first started as a rookie, um, and he was kind of highlighted for when he came from EU. Uh, he's just seen so much, and I think he's just so solid. Yeah, I, and that's why that's why I tip my hat to TSM in this. And he's even though smart. I, I love the way Echo Fox is playing, but I think I, I just think they'll pull it out. I think no matter what happens, I think this is going to be the game of playoffs. I could see this being the most hype game of playoffs. Yeah, it could be really cool. Hopefully it'll live up. Hopefully. And then who do you got, FlyQuest and GGS? Dude, I don't know. They went one and one just on Sunday. So. I know. And FlyQuest didn't even have their main jungler in. When they won. When they won. <laughs> 
it's so hard to call because there's so many like like variables like does wild turtle imp does jj imp does <laughs> pob get caught in these dumb places where he shouldn't get caught is santorin back in his normal form is right does does Brogan ha- have weird picks that he pulls out i think it's gonna vary a lot in the top lane and the jungle i think that's gonna really dictate the game not so much in the 2v2 i think Monster is a really good tank player, and Viper is playing, you know, the Aatroxes, the Lissandras, he's got his Riven, he's, he, he can play more of those, those carry style top laners, and I think that's going to be a real issue for Golden Guardians is Haunter isn't as good as playing the carry style top laners as other top laners in playoffs, yep. which sucks because I love Haunter as a player. I love his personality. I think he's a good player. Uh, he was a TSM player. I, yeah, he's just not as good on the carries. I though. could see this going. I could see this series being a 3-0 for either team, and I could see it being a 3-2. Yeah, I'll be interested. If I was like, Who's your pick, though? You got you to gotta choose one. <laughs> I struggle so much to pick GGS because they have Olay. <laughs> And I, I, oh, fuck, dude. All right, I'll give you mine. I'm going FlyQuest, and I'm going a little bit with my heart, because I think that Wild Turtle has had a really good split. So I, I'd like to see him carry it, but I, I do give it to a 3-2, because I think both teams are pretty evenly matched. I think I this could see, be a really see, no, another I good series. I want to see Wild Turtle pop off. I like POB, and I like Haunter. I like Haunter more, so I'm going to go GGS 3-2. Are you ready for my series of the week from LPL or LCK? I am ready. I probably okay. won't watch it, but unless a colleague's playing, then I'll watch it. Trust me, you're gonna want to watch this. Right. Um, I haven't. I didn't get. I didn't get to all the games this weekend, but I did get to one series that I think was particularly good, and it's funny because it's against it's the two last place teams <laughs> in LCK, but the games are fucking hilarious and so much fun to watch. So. Cue yourself up, Jin Air versus KT, and uh, you will not be disappointed. It is a hilarious series with a lot of weird picks. You get some Zed in there. You get um, oh, there are there are a few other good ones that I'm just blanking on. But it was it was a really good series, and I think you'll enjoy it. They were bloody series. There was a ton of team fighting. Um, do yourself a favor. If you don't want to watch the whole games, right? You don't want to watch. You don't want to spend forty minutes watching. Cue up the highlights. You get some great highlight videos. It's literally on, the whole game. Yeah, it's it's a Nivea, right? It's a it, like a, if you just look up on YouTube, Jag versus KT highlights. It'll give you all the highlights in one one click. It'll be nineteen minutes or something like that of your time, and it it, it is well worth it. Well, there you go. Uh, Danger Penguins, LCK slash lec game of the week or i guess we'll just call it like foreign games of the week yeah especially game two if you're gonna watch anything watch game two it's it's so good maybe maybe (laughs) i'll have to watch it it's just it's just hilarious is there anything else we have to touch on i I think i think we that was was pretty well in depth i think i think our listeners are well sick of hearing our voices at this point I mean, it's been an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> we were we said we were gonna keep these down to a half an hour, so enjoy this hour and ten minutes. And of we just really show. like talking about LCS. We do. Hey, right, well, if you guys enjoyed that episode, uh, leave a like. Let us know in the comments down below if there's anything else you'd like to hear us see us talk about. Uh, we didn't get much feedback at all on the last one uh but we also didn't announce it on what was normal podcast uh so we're gonna do that this week and hopefully more of you get to listen to these two episodes uh let us know what you think if we do get good feedback and people are liking it uh we'll probably look for one more guy to bring in so or girl or girl uh to bring in and help us out just so 
you know, Danger's got like a kid, like yeah. some weird stuff like that. Uh, that's it's it's a weird world, man. Just kind of, I want to try and roll these out every Tuesday, uh, rather than waiting till later in the week when you're pretty much getting ready to watch next week. The next, yeah, right. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, you got anything you want to say, Danger? No, thanks for listening. Check out that Jag versus KT game. Trust me. Game two. Watch it. <laughs> Have a good night, guys. Later.